Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, advancement coach and strategist, lawyer, and professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your coach, Adrian Schneer, and I am so glad that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some time here with me today. Today, we are going to talk about time. And the reason that I want to talk about time today is because so often what I hear from my clients, what I hear from students, what I hear from professionals is, I just don't have enough time for this. I just don't have enough time in the day. There's not enough time in the day. And I've said the same thing. And I think that one of the most important things to think about when it comes to time is priorities. And so the other thing that I want to talk about today is what we're doing during that time and finish off with a strategy that I think will be life-changing once implemented in your life. So here we go. Let's talk about time. When we think about time and not having enough of it, one of the questions that I want to ask is, what do you want time for that you don't currently have time for, that you currently perceive that you don't have time for? And maybe if you're walking or driving, don't do this, but if you're sitting, maybe pull out a piece of paper. You know, I'm a big fan of a pen and paper. And write down for yourself, or come back to this later if you are walking or driving, write down for yourself what it is that you want time for. What are the things that you are not able or think that you're not able to spend time on? And once you write that down, what I want you to do is draw a line. And on the next side of the line, on the other side of the line, I want you to write down what is preventing you from doing those things that you want to do. And the reason that this exercise is so important is because it actually makes us put down on paper things that we want, reasons that they're not happening, and we can start to hold ourselves accountable. So for example, something I often hear is, I don't have enough time to work out. I don't have enough time to go to the gym. I don't have enough time to see my the people that I want to see. I don't have enough time to maybe take up that hobby that I wanted to take up. And I actually see this a lot with our clients who are working on standardized test prep, that they feel all consumed by their standardized test prep and the need to study. And what is missing actually from their schedules before they work with us, what is missing from their schedules is time to think and plan. And so number one, we have to figure out what it is that we want to do. Number two, what is preventing us from doing it? Sometimes also known as excuses. Maybe we're also procrastinating. Maybe we're afraid of taking that next step. And then we want to actually think about what we're doing in the time that we do have. So next, I want to talk about what we are doing in the time that we do have, because everyone has 24 hours in a day. Everyone needs sleep. Everyone needs to eat. Everyone has different ways of taking care of themselves and their needs, but everyone has needs, okay? And generally, for survival, those needs are aligned across human beings. People do things differently, of course. People have different ways of carrying out the tactics, strategies, skills, tools that they need in order to maintain their well being. But we have to look at what we're doing in the time that we have. Like I said, everybody has the same amount of time in a day. So, what are we doing? And so often, what we are doing with our time 
is engaging in this rat race on this hamster wheel. All of the doing, the doing, the doing, the doing, and not enough thinking, not enough time to plan, not enough time to figure out our strategy moving forward. So the second thing that I want us to really internalize here is, are we giving ourselves the time that we need in order to be able to execute what it is that we want to execute in order to build that life beyond our wildest dreams? And this is something that is so vital to the work that I do with every single one of my clients, because if we don't take the time to think about what it is that we want, how can we go get it? How can we go get it? Sometimes it's really hard to think about what it is that we want. And sometimes, often, maybe all the time, that requires hope. And hope scares people. Hope can be really scary because hope is connected to a what if, right? Because when you hope for something, there's no guarantee that you will achieve it. There's no guarantee that it will turn out exactly how you want. There's no guarantee around anything that hasn't happened yet. And so there's fear around hope. Fear of disappointment, fear of failure, fear of embarrassment, fear of not living up to your own expectations, let alone other people's. But the thing is that in order to achieve anything anything that you want, you need to have hope. You need to have hope. And that means that you need to also give yourself a moment to think about it. Give yourself that time to think about what it is that you want. And then the next step is, how are you going to get there? How are you going to get there? So we also, in our schedules, need to carve out time to think. And that it can be on a walk, it can be in a morning routine, an evening routine, it can be sometimes throughout the day in the back of our minds, which it often is, but it should be concerted and it should be effortful and it should be dedicated time, dedicated time to thinking about what it is that we actually want. Often visualization is a really big help here. And so we rely on visualization a lot. We've had several podcast episodes now on visualization, on the scientific evidence that supports the use of visualization in our growth and in our advancement. And we'll cite those in the show notes for you. But the thing here is that we need time to do that. And so in this time that you're setting aside for thinking about what it is that you want, maybe anticipate that you might be a little bit uncomfortable anticipate that you're going to have to move through some fear. Fear is normal. Anxiety is normal. Nervousness is normal. It's our body's response to something that is uncertain. Evolutionarily, it's actually beneficial to have these feelings. So we, at Apply Yourself, make sure that we are moving through these feelings rather than bottling them up. That's really important. So as you move through figuring out what it is that you want in that time that you've set aside to figure out not only what you want, but to put it on paper, to see it, and to move towards it, you need a plan. Now, let me give you a bit of an example as to how this can all play out. So we need to figure out what we want. We need to figure out what is standing in our way, excuses, procrastination, any sort of challenge or barrier, whether they are socially constructed or not. Then we move through to dedicating time to figuring out how we're going to do that, coming up with a plan. And then we have execution. And one of the ways that this has played out so prominently for me is in the work that I've been doing for decades, you know, the question, a question that I actually get asked a lot is, you know, how do you do everything that you do? And one of the answers that I often give is, well, I don't do everything every single day, right? You have priorities, you have the system that you use to triage priorities, 
urgent things that happen to come up. But as a student, you know, thinking back, what was sort of the secret to getting done so much in such a finite amount of time? And still, you know, now running a firm, running Apply Yourself, what is the secret to getting so much done in a short amount of time? I finished my undergrad at a high school by 2011, finished my master's in 2012. It was one of six out of 12 that graduated. Then I finished my PhD by 2016. And a lot of people thought I wouldn't be able to do that. A lot of people said to me, you're never going to finish in under four years because it was about three years. It was about 3.8 years, 3.9 years, I would say, because I finished just as I was starting law school in 2016. And then I finished law school in 2019. I articled from 2019 to 2020, and then I opened up my firm in 2020. And I, I was running Apply Yourself already since 2015. So what is the secret to having done that? Finishing four degrees before I turned 29. I think that there are, this is twofold. One is that and, and by the way, still volunteering the whole time, working either part-time or full-time, depending on the year, depending on what was going on, having family commitments, still having a social life, making time to go to the gym and exercise several times a week and excelling at things that I enjoyed. So what is the secret? What was the secret? And honestly, I think it was looking back, giving myself a lot of time to plan, a lot of time to think, and time to organize. I came up with amazing systems, structures, and strategies that I now give to my clients when they work with me. And those organization systems, those structures that I put into place for my own success have been transferable to my clients. And I'm so happy to give them those tools. And looking back, the ability to plan and have the foresight that things were going to come up, that I had commitments, that I wanted to do a lot in a short period of time. And a lot of what I did was dependent on other people's time as well. I often was reliant on supervisors getting work back to me. That means that I had to consider their time too. And I've told this story before about my supervisor, one of my graduate school supervisors who was often in Australia for parts of the year. And I was so mindful of their time that when they, and they were the primary person who was, who I was working with in order to get my dissertation done and everything done that I needed to get done. And so for the time that they were in Australia, I actually shifted my schedule so that I was actually working partially in in the that time zone that he was working in and and that he was living in so that when he was awake I was also awake so that we could exchange emails get everything done send things back and forth and so it really takes a lot of planning takes a lot of organization and time that you give yourself to plan because these things can't happen for me things don't happen without planning without organization. And all of that is driven by my own vision for where I'm going, where I'm going, who I'm taking with me, and how we're going to get there. And I think that this is so important because so much of this is the work that we do in our visualization exercises. And I've talked about how important that has been to me. And that has really been one of the driving forces, one of the main guides for me to understand what is in alignment with me, what feels in alignment with me, and what doesn't. And getting to a place where I was able to, and this took practice, where I was able to say no to opportunities and say yes to the right ones. And on the face of it, opportunities may look like they're the right ones. And then upon further thought and consideration and figuring out, okay, is this really in alignment with me and my choices? Realizing maybe not that 
you really, it's a skill to be able to say no. And maybe we'll do another episode on that. But the skill to say no is the skill to realize what will take you one step further and what will take you either a step away from or stay neutral when it comes to actually achieving your goals. And goals always change. We've talked about this before. Goals always change and that's okay. Goals should change. Goals should actually evolve. If your goals are staying the same year over year over year, something's wrong. So what we need and what has been really the driving force behind everything that I've been able to do and accomplish over the last, you know, however many years is realizing that you need time to think. And I realized that very early on, even before I started talking about any of this, like what year is it? Now it's 2023. I probably started thinking about this back in, you know, 20, 2008, probably after my first year of undergrad, which didn't go as planned. And you can listen to episode two for more on that. But I realized something needed to change. Like you couldn't just do things. It did, like it didn't happen. Things need plans. Things need, you need time. You need time to implement. You need buy-in from other people. You need support from other people. You play a role in other people's lives just like they play a role in yours. You need time. How does that play out when you're a student? You need time to look at your calendar, map out all of your deadlines. I would do this every single semester and I spoke to students about this every single semester that I have been teaching. How are you planning your time? How are you laying out your calendar? Is your calendar digital? Is it on your wall? And we've also had an episode on this on on calendars and organization, which we'll link to in the show notes as well. And what I did as a student every semester was I would print out the whole semester of months and I would stick it up on my wall And I would map out every single academic deadline. I would map out when lectures were. I would map out, granted, this is before like digital calendars were a thing, but the actual act of going through every single syllabus and writing down by hand what my obligations were for that semester helped me to connect better with what my obligations actually were. It's very different than typing stuff into a calendar, even if you print it out. So I would recommend, I would recommend the hand to pen to, to paper method. So I would write down my classes when I had to be on campus. I would write down my exams, assignments. I would write down the time that I had to commit to volunteer work that I wanted to commit to volunteer work. And that was every week that I volunteered for at least six years. And at the time I was volunteering at Sunnybrook, a hospital here in Toronto in the George Hughes Veterans Wing and loved it. I would also write down any meetings I had or when I had to reach out to certain people, when I had to start thinking about something like start to think about your paper topic start to think about this, start to think about that. And it really just gives you a nod to what you have to do ahead of time. I would write down what my work schedule was. I would write down any family commitments, any social commitments. When I was caring for family members in the hospital, I would write down when I was planning on going. Of course, that, you know, if if you've ever been caring for anybody in the hospital, sometimes, many times, things can be unpredictable and you have to sort of drop things and run. I would write down the, the when things were predictable, when I was going to be there. And so planning, like all of that took time. Think about how much time that would take, hours and hours and hours and hours at the beginning of a semester. But then for the next four months, I didn't have to think about anything. It's all right there. Smooth, smooth. I could carry things out. I knew where I had to be. And the same thing goes in my work now, in my professional life, this has taken me through, these skills have taken me through years until today, and they're still working. Of course, things look a little bit different now. I have multiple calendars and I'm keeping track of many people's calendars now, but we need to take that time. We need to take the time to plan. And even now we're planning for each quarter. We're planning for next year. We're planning for the year after. We have a five-year plan. We have a 10-year plan. We know where we want to go. And yeah, it absolutely takes hope. 
And it also takes a ton of hard work and energy and time. So you need time to think and plan. You need time to think and plan because you need everything to be in place in order to move forward smoothly. You need time to think and plan because you need to go get those things that you hope for. You need to achieve this life that you want, this life beyond your wildest dreams. You deserve it. It's yours. You just have to go get it. And that requires time to think about not only what you want, but how you're going to get there. The other thing that I get a lot is, okay, so I want all these things, but they're too big. And my question is, okay, why do you think they're too big? And this may be a little bit of a tangent for this episode, but I think that's okay. And often somebody thinking that something is too big for them is them placing limiting beliefs on themselves and internalizing limiting beliefs of others. And we've had conversations in the past about internal versus external validation. And so what I want to say today is that if you're surrounding yourself with people who think smaller than you, or if people's expectations of you are smaller than your expectations for yourself, and if other people are uncomfortable by the size of your goals, the scope of your goals, the breadth of your goals, the vastness of your goals. If that, if your goals make other people uncomfortable, let me tell you something. That is not your problem. It is not your problem. That is a problem that they have to deal with. Your role and responsibility in that is making sure that you are giving yourself the tools that you need to succeed at your goals. So don't let somebody who's thinking smaller than you or somebody who's afraid to think as big as you are, don't let them dictate the hope that you have for yourself and your ability to think and plan, strategize, and action every single step that you need to take in order to have the kind of success that you want. And we're going to talk about success in an upcoming episode. So stay tuned for that. Now, it doesn't mean that people who think smaller than you or people who are intimidated or uncomfortable by the size and the breadth and the scope of your goals, it doesn't mean you have to cut them out. It means that they're probably not going to be the people that you are going to seek support from. And I'm being very blunt about this. There's no way around it. You know that here we're very blunt. We talk about the things that nobody wants to talk about. So it's not that these people are bad people. It's not that they don't want what's best for you. It's that you may be operating at a very different level than they are. And when you're operating at a different level, you require an environment that is at and beyond your level. So those people are not going to be the people that you surround yourself with. When it comes to achieving your goals, you're not going to rely on them for support. And instead, you need to find a community of people that you can rely on for support, that you can rely on for strategy, that you can rely on for that big thinking that you are craving, that you need in order to achieve and and exceed your goals. And part of that is seeking out mentorship. You need to seek out mentorship in order to be able to advance. Nobody, nobody succeeds on their own. It's actually impossible. Like you you cannot succeed on your own. You cannot live in a vacuum. You need other people to succeed, but you need the right people. And this is not a matter of, you know, benefiting from people This is not, you know, at the expense of anybody. This is developing actual, honest, authentic, genuine relationships with people that are mutually beneficial, where everybody finds value, where, and I'm not talking any certain kind of value I'm saying, and and we all know these friendships where, you know, one person is always the one to call right? You want it to be mutual. You want somebody to call you just as much as you call them. And if they're not calling you, maybe they're not the right person. 
If they don't care, maybe they're not the right person. And you want to surround yourself around people who are like-minded in terms of growth. You want to surround yourself around people who have hope, who aren't down in the dumps all the time, who aren't fear-based, who aren't competition-based, who aren't scared to the point of being paralyzed by fear. You want to put yourself in an environment around people who can elevate you and you will elevate them. And part of that is mentorship. Part of that is a community. And that takes time too. Not only to figure out where that is and who those people are. I mean, that takes time. But also then the time to come to terms with the fact that you need that community. You need that support. You need that ability to be able to reach out and have people just understand what you're talking about when it comes to your growth, when it comes to your advancement, when it comes to your own evolution, when it comes to you elevating yourself and achieving everything that you want. And it takes time to come to that realization too. And then you need a plan and then you need to implement it. So to bring things full circle, we started by talking about writing things down on paper. Write down what you want. Write down what is stopping you. And now I want you to add another column or add another row. And I want this to be the how. I want you to write down what you're going to do in the immediate, maybe a month from now, and maybe six months from now, what you're going to do about it. Because no one is going to do this work for you. You have to do this for yourself. And once you go through this exercise, once you realize that you actually need time to plan, time to strategize, then you have the time, you give yourself the time to actually implement the strategy because you're not flying by the seat of your pants, throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. You have a plan because you came up with it because you gave yourself the time. I would love it if you would send me a DM or send me an email to let me know if this resonated with you and how it worked for you. I want to thank you for taking the time to join me today and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.